Hello, colleagues. The crews for ISS are greeting you. And yes, we have a great news based on the conclusion on the committee that they just completed a few minutes. That's why we were a little bit late to start our activity. Uh, the crews for 65 crew on Soyuz MS uh, and ISS are completely ready and they may start the Baikonur portion of training and preparation. Now the main crew, Alec Navitsky, commander of IS-18 and ISS flight engineer, hero of Russia, Fyodor Dubrov, a uh, flight engineer of uh, Soyuz and IS, uh, flight engineer of ISS, Mark Landy High, flight engineer of uh, Soyuz M18 and NASA astronaut and the backup crew, Anton Schkapler of the command of Soyuz 18 and the uh, uh, command of Roscosmos, uh, Alec Artemyev, uh, ISS uh, um, flight engineer uh, and McLean flight engineer of Soyuz and ISS from NASA. And now, with your permission, let's start immediately with the answers to the questions we have received. The crews are ready. We have uh, social media questions and Irina from TAS agency. Hello, this is a good tradition. The first question from uh, Rose Cosmos is uh, for um, Alec and Piotr Navitsky and Dubrov. Uh, this is an amazing um, a coincidence that you are actually flying uh, right uh, before the uh, celebration of uh, April 12th when the first uh, flight uh, of Gagarin was commenced in space. So thank you very much for your question. Of course, this is a very responsible mission that we are going to have both in flight and in the mission. We will be feeling grateful to you, to Yuri Gagarin, for this possibility of working in uh, space. April 12th, most likely, will be busy with PLO events. And at the same time, as soon as we receive, we have a lot of experience experiments that we will have to conduct, science experiments. Most likely the crew is going to be very busy and we will not have so much time for celebrations. Also, I would like to add that for me personally, uh, the uh, hero act of Gagarin is uh, the uh, the star for me that I'm trying to search because uh, this is the example that I'm trying to follow. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, coming back to the questions, uh, thank you very much. This is from the Star City. We will continue the theme of the 60th anniversary of Gagarin flight. Question to Mark Mandehai. MS-18 launch is going to happen three days before uh, the uh, celebration of anniversary of the historic Gagarin flight. Uh, which traditions uh, have been preserved and are you following any of the traditions that have been established 60 years ago? Uh, I know that there are a lot of traditions and these are important. Uh, we will be watching a certain movie before going. Uh, well, there are a lot of traditions actually that we will perform. And, and uh, I, think, I think that's enough. All right, thank you. And the question for Ed McLean, which impressions uh, from training uh, in Star City where 60 years ago Gagarin was uh, preparing for his first uh, flight and uh, what is the difference for you in this training as an experienced astronaut? Um, thank you. The hall that we are sitting in uh, right now and the building surrounding it is where uh, the space program, the human spaceflight program in Russia started. For me, it's very special to be part of a crew, an international crew, training in, these, in this same area. Me, 
60 years ago, our space programs were working in competition. And now we work in cooperation. And it's important, I think, that uh, maybe our programs can work faster alone. But we will go farther together. Thank you very much. Please allow me um, to ask another question. When we were collecting all the questions, there were a lot of uh, good words. Uh, um, um, actually, uh, everybody says, uh, please have a successful flight. And though the best uh, 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 so uh, all the best uh, to the crew, and this is and especially for you because you are a guiding star. Another question for Mark van der Heij. It's uh, a serious question. Um, so for your flight on April 9th, when the contract was uh, signed, uh, was it um, any different for you or were you already ready to uh, f fill the void? Uh, we have been training throughout as a uh, uh, crew of three and four sometimes. Even though I wasn't absolutely certain until recently whether I would launch with this crew or not, I never had a doubt that I would be ready following the process that was prepared for me, and uh, I was always very confident and not just my ability, but the ability of every crew member with which we, I worked. Thank you for your question. And now we're going back to TAS agency, Irina. Thank you. This is a question from the uh, military edition of uh, Yes, Irina Moskvich, how many EVAs are going to be conducted uh, during your mission and when is the first one planned? Thank you for your question. We have a very busy question for extravehicular activities. We have uh, total about 10 of those. Uh, I will be lucky probably to work in three of those. Uh, Piotr uh, will be doing more EVA work. <laughs> then tell us a little bit. Since I am planning to be staying longer, uh, also together with Expedition 66, most likely uh, I will be also accepting uh, another node module, and that will involve uh, several preparation EVAs, uh, probably up to seven EVAs I will have to conduct if everything is going according to the plan. Thank you very much. One more question from TAS. Uh, and this is combined with another question. Uh, Piotr Dubrov will continue working with the program. Uh, and uh, what are the main objectives of your mission? We hope very much that the previous uh, crew uh, that uh, will complete already all the leak checks uh, that uh, they're busy with now, and uh, we will support our station as much as possible. If necessary, we will continue looking for the leak, uh, but uh, we really hope that uh, with our mission, this activity will be completed, that our station is going to be uh, in good shape. Um, everything is, uh, n what is necessary on board is there. This is a very small leak. Um, uh, that is why it's taking so long to find. Another question. Uh, this is for Alec. Uh, for 
uh, science module, uh, how much work is being planned for preparation to that? As we already said, uh, integration of the module will take a lot of work uh, that has to do with unloading the module. And the science uh, module, uh, you know, uh, all the work, there is no limit to perfection. We will keep doing everything what is needed. And we hope that the next expeditions that are going to visit ISS will be happy with, with what we have integrated. Thank you very much. Now to GCTC. Thank you very much. We will continue the science module theme. We have been looking, waiting for that for a long time. And uh, there's a lot of preparation on the station for that. Question from Ekaterina Pavlyshenko for Alec Navitsky and Pyotr Dubro. First of all, uh, best of luck and success in your mission, um, as like everybody else is saying. And the question is, uh, since you are going to meet uh, the science module on ISS, and most likely about 10 EVAs will be required to prepare for that, um, how much more difficult this task is going to be because of the replacement of uh, uh, Sergei with Mark. Uh, yes, of course, Mark's participation is very important here because he will be staying at the station during our EVS. He will be waiting uh, for us and taking care of everything. Um, uh, and the uh, replacement of uh, Sergei with uh, Mark uh, did not uh, affect our training because uh, we have already been training uh, together and we are uh, happy with uh, either of the crew members that will be helping us. We are happy and grateful to them. Uh, thank you. And now uh, from Russian Cosmos magazine, uh, during examination training that completed just uh, recently, successfully. Um, it has been said that Pyotr Dubrov and uh, uh, Mark van de Heij also worked on uh, through the program of Expedition 66. Does it mean that you are going to swap the suits at some point and uh, one is going to use a U.S. suit and the other a Russian suit? Uh, how about uh, maybe you will be already using um, the Russian U.S. segment and the U.S. space suit? Um, uh, Piotr, will you say anything about that? Uh, so far, it has not been planned to work uh, in the U.S. Uh, space suit uh, um, uh, for the cosmonauts and for an astronauts with the Orlan. Uh, we are going to use our own equipment, uh, of course. We have prepared uh, uh, and trained uh, at uh, um, uh, NASA. Uh, but I was working on uh, um, operating the station arm. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, the preparation for working with the uh, U.S. space, that would be only um, in case of an off-nominal situation. That's why nominally it is not being planned, but uh, off-nominally it is possible. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, for the backup crew to cheer them up, uh, Anton Shkabler and Alek Artemyev. So there are a lot of sci-fi uh, movies in the 70s uh, that is happening uh, for the space travel in uh, the 23rd century. Do you think that would be possible? And uh, uh, how are you envisioning that? It's an interesting uh, question. Since uh, the heroes of those movies were children, uh, please use a different mic. Uh, we were not able to hear you. As far as I remember, those movies in the 70s uh, uh, featured the children who flew to space, not professional uh, cosmonauts, uh, basically school children. Uh, and we talk about uh, century 23, uh, I believe already in the end of the 21st century, that would be possible. Uh, to explore deep space. Uh, we are getting close to that, that not professional uh, space travelers uh, getting ready to uh, learn about the universe. Everything is realistic, especially in the 23rd century. 
Alec, Artem, yes, I understand you second that. Absolutely. I agree with my commander. And we will fly soon. Thank you very much. Everybody smiling. Let's go back to TAS studio. Another question. Uh, which uh, um, indicator for weightlessness you are going to use? And how about your relatives coming to Baikonur to say bye? Uh, actually, let's start with the relatives. Unfortunately, I believe uh, those trips are still not safe because of pandemia, and uh, they will be watching us online. Uh, also, for the uh, weightlessness indicator, I do have it with me. This is one of the heroes of our nice cartoon, Kitten Gaff. Yes, it is him. Especially this year, I believe it has been 40 years since this cartoon came out. And uh, the uh, story is that the puppy is waiting at home for the kitten that is flying in space. Thank you very much. What a nice, kind story. Irina, you have uh, more questions? Yes, of course. This is for Mark van der Heij. In eight days, exactly after your arrival, to ISS Kate uh, is going to come back. And after that, uh, uh, Shannon is coming to see you how difficult would this time is going to be to prepare for everything and to perform the program that will need to be uh, done uh, uh, because uh, of so many experiments uh, planned and so many astronauts are going to be on the U.S. segment. Uh, we just uh, hope you will tell us a lot about this. Certainly the space station internal volume is, is very large. It's like the size of a six-bedroom house inside. But of course, there's lots of space where we do experiments, and I have no doubt that we'll be able to uh, all work very efficiently together. And in a situation where you're isolated from the rest of humanity, I feel very confident that being able to see more humans will be nice. Uh, Thanks for the question. Спасибо за вопрос. Now we'll give the mic to Moscow again to TAS agency. And what is your question? We have so many questions. Uh, the social media is exploding with questions. There, people are wondering uh, how cosmonauts are going to spend their pastime. Any free time, but it will be the favorite activity. Books, maybe? Well, I will say that uh, we'll be watching uh, the Earth uh, and photographing, doing video footage of the Earth um, that is possible. Uh, as to the books, I uh, don't know. We'll be watching movies. <laughs> Very good. Uh, but maybe what kind of uh, movies you prefer? What is going well with being in space? Uh, adventures, adventure movies. I think that is the best match for what we are doing. Very good, thank you. Now, Piotr, uh, what would you prefer to do? Of course, uh, to be on board and not to take pictures of the Earth is not possible. The views is amazing and magnificent, magnetic, and this is what we will be doing, of course. I will take a couple books with me. Uh, uh, I need uh, Alex Zelezny, Strogatsky Brothers, as to the movies, and we'll be selecting movies together. I believe sci-fi I would prefer. Uh, so adventures and sci-fi uh, still continue to be your preference, although you are uh, doing this adventure. 
already. Uh, how about anything realistic? Can you be like down to earth? Uh, like uh, just fantastic uh, subject matter? Well, it would be really always nice to dream about something even greater than what you are doing. That is why sci fi and uh, adventures would still be prevalent. And Mark, uh, what is your preference to spend free time on board, if you have any? Uh, I will be watching uh, the movies and uh, calling my wife. How often do you uh, call your wife? Every two days, of course. As to the whole family, I talk to them once a week. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> All the colleagues that interview uh, with us uh, say that it is emotionally most charging, most difficult to speak with the families, with the um, uh, close people who are close to you from space, of course, it is true, it is emotionally charging. Uh, this is my family, I love them. And life is better when I'm next to them, they're next to me. Uh, but when I um, had this opportunity to fly to space again, I had to ask my wife, uh, and uh, my wife, my family said, yes, I may go. Perfect. Uh, Piotr? Uh, you didn't say anything about how often you talk to your family. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, but how about just being away from home? How does it feel? Everything we do in space, uh, we do for our children, for our families. That is why it is very important to uh, keep in touch uh, as when it's possible, whenever possible. And uh, for you, Alec, uh, as a commander, what would you say how emotionally difficult it is to communicate with your family from space? You have a, a great experience in that. You're the hero of Russia. Tell us, what, what are your feelings? I believe it is normal when uh, a person is missing people who are dear to uh, this person. So like 400 kilometers uh, from the orbit to the uh, Earth. Uh, however, this is a long uh, way still. And that is why, uh, you know what's happening, uh, whenever cosmonaut is in space, uh, something is always breaking at home, you will, and you are needed there, and but you are not able to help them, you are not able to do anything but just give a good advice as to how to repair something at home. Well, I believe uh, some good advice will always be helpful in those cases, of course, let's believe that. Also, Alexei. Uh, what does the backup crew doing when uh, the vehicle is on the launch pad? Uh, colleagues, uh, backup crew, uh, you are not bashful, please do that. Um, by tradition, if you look uh, closely at the preparation of uh, the launch vehicle, when it is uh, coming to the launch uh, but um, it's kind of green, you know, but when it is launching, it is white. So our task is to paint the launch vehicle. So while the guys are sitting up there and waiting to be launched to speed, we are painting the launch vehicle. And uh, exactly, uh, uh, are you doing uh, the same thing as your colleague or you have some other tasks? at the time when they are waiting for the prime crew to be launched. Um, well, listening to the uh, um, music that we are preparing, because every crew can prepare up to five, I uh, remember, up to five um, uh, songs that we will be listening at the time uh, when uh, the crew is waiting to be launched. And the whole um, 
support crew, um, everybody is listening to those songs that we have selected. Those songs, those musical compositions are devoted to our command, our team, our uh, families, and that is a bit touchy. <laughs> Uh, also a comment, uh, astronauts uh, um, are not only smart, but they are also having a very good uh, sense of humor. What Anton Shkaplerov just said, uh, Anton, please don't uh, take it for real. Uh, of course, they are not painting the rocket. The rocket is white after it is being um, uh, filled with fuel. <laughs> so, this is this is just a joke. I understand there are a lot of uh, myths and uh, everything um, surrounding space profession. And, and you know, uh, you are wearing a mask, and I could not see your facial expression. I couldn't really tell whether you were joking or saying um, as uh, is. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised that some people would uh, um, think think that uh, what you said is uh, is for real. Uh, because, uh, in fact, uh, there are not so many people who know much about space profession, and uh, I will not be surprised that, uh, you know, some people would think that you were really painting that rocket. <laughs> yeah, that was a joke for sure. Okay, any more questions? Of course, one more. Uh, from Northern Ossetia. Uh, there is a tradition, if you want to come back to the place that you really like, you're leaving something there, uh, some of items that belong to you. Do you do that for the space station? Well, that would not be correct to leave something on the space station because uh, that takes certain volume on space. And uh, of course you will leave some maybe uh, food items, maybe some clothing that has not been used by the previous crew. Um, uh, in fact, uh, when we arrive, uh, the, we will already find some food, some uh, clothing uh, that uh, we promise to eat everything that's left there and finish using up the clothes. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Another question from social media. Uh, so, Alec, your uh, wife is uh, a, a blogger, uh, and she's running a blog which is extremely popular. Uh, please tell me, are you reading this blog as well? And uh, was it a surprise for you uh, that some things that she is actually revealing? Um, in the blog? Well, uh, I'm not uh, helping her to write the blog. Uh, what I'm doing, I, I'm uh, checking some um, some uh, technical moments to make sure that um, those are covered correctly. Um, uh, just uh, to make sure that it looks um, you know, seriously professional. And and the rest of uh, the subject matter, whatever she's writing, the emotions and everything, this is this is her um, this is her work, this is what she's doing. Are you supporting her in this activity? Of course that's a, when the lady is doing something, of course I'm supporting whatever she's doing. And uh, uh, if you are interested in preparation for uh, training for flying to space, uh, written by the wife of the cosmonaut, please use this blog. Also, the question from uh, Mr. Gematovich. Uh, how about uh, vaccinations from COVID? Uh, are astronauts and cosmonauts uh, vaccinated? Uh, Piotr and I, right after the new year, we got vaccinated. Mark, I believe you are vaccinated as well. Yes, I'm very happy that I am. Uh, yes, so that uh, makes us feel safer. Everybody is vaccinated. Uh, and as you see, we are still uh, using the measures to make sure the safety is uh, in place. We have masks. Also, what is usually being 
told by your families at the time when you are about to be launched to space? Uh, well, there is a tradition uh, when uh, uh, relatives, uh, parents, uh, um, families, uh, how about that? Yeah, you can hear better now. There is a tradition when friends uh, and relatives may write and may put together a video clip that will be shown to the crew at the time when they are being transported to the launch pad. We cannot know what the content of the clip is. Um, uh, we will find out about it right before launch, but I'm sure that those are going to be very kind, very sincere words, and we'll be looking forward to see that. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 tell me on medical uh, subject again. Uh, what about um, um, uh, vitamins or supplements on board? Um, are you taking those? Well, we have a bunch of vitamins and, and uh, medi uh, medicine. Uh, if the crew surgeon believes that it is necessary for the crew to take something, we will be taking something. Um, however, the the, uh, the food rations are very well balanced, and uh, uh, I'm not sure if they need to be supplemented by uh, vitamins. Um, but the best thing is to have fresh fruit and vegetables that are being delivered to us by cargo vehicle. During a long uh, expedition, usually uh, the crew members uh, uh, share their cuisine. Uh, maybe you can tell us what was good, um, what did you like during training, what did you figure out, what did you like of the Russian cuisine for Mark and Anton, what did you like from the U.S. cuisine, are you going to continue that? Of course we are going to do that on weekends, we will be arranging dinners on the Russian segment on the next weekend, we will be arranging dinners on the U.S. segment and I love, um, I love shrimp, for example, of the U.S. Uh, cuisine, what about uh, I, I love getting Russian um, that food coming. for Mark. My favorite, when the, I'm coming to the Russian segment on my last flight, my Russian crewmates would save me some uh, lamb or duck because they knew I liked it a lot. Мне очень нравится российский ассортимент питания. Он он очень разнообразный, и я надеюсь, что когда я прилечу на российский сегмент, мои товарищи по экипажу оставят мне немного утятины или ягненка. Uh, since Piotr has not been on the board of ISS yet, uh, he put together a preference list for what kind of food he likes, and uh, uh, we would like to know what exactly is there. Well, I would say that I love all kinds of food, the U.S. food, the Russian food. Uh, I, I love uh, fish, uh, I love seafood, uh, um, and various combinations of vegetables and fruit. And uh, so, uh, uh, seafood, of course. Well, I understand we started talking about food. Probably people are getting hungry before lunch, but we still have a few more questions. Yes. Uh, let's uh, go back a little bit about health. There was a question about uh, um, vaccination a lot, but um, people are wondering also what is going to happen if uh, a crew member uh, gets sick on board. Is it possible to get sick on board? Is there a protocol for uh, uh, cures, um, uh, for treating a patient? Well, it's better not to get sick nowhere, not on the earth, not in space. Yet uh, we have gone through very strict quarantine and um, uh, the physicians believe that uh, we are absolutely clean and ready to go. Uh, if something happens um, on board, that we are ready for uh, medical operations as well, uh, we can always consult uh, in a closed loop with a crew surgeon, but in general, uh, cosmonauts and astronauts uh, are in very good shape health-wise to perform their mission. Thank you very much. Anton, a question for you, if you don't mind. 
Are you enjoyed your joke previously? Uh, there are a lot of um, legends and myths about myth. Uh, would you share any myth about space? Well, the simplest probably is that we eat from tubes. Uh, well, we don't eat from tubes, we don't eat from vials. We do have them for maybe containing some spices or whatever, uh, but um, it is sublimated uh, food that uh, we eat nominally. Um, and also from flight to flight, we have uh, more and more better and better variety that is coming off shelf. Uh, and um, actually, you can buy the same food we are eating in general supermarkets. Uh, uh, those are pre prepared and sent to us, and we are eating just like everybody, like on us. Thank you very much. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, flying to space is a joy, just like for us when we are going on vacation on a plane. Uh, have you ever thought about having any other profession? And this is a question for Anne. What about um, if you are not to be an astronaut, what would you be? Hard question. The only thing I ever wanted to do was fly space. So I would not be very happy if I could not. Uh, but before I was an astronaut, I was a helicopter test pilot in our army. And uh, if I was not flying in space, I would be still flying helicopters and testing helicopters. Um, I really love flying helicopters. And uh, it is surprising how similar uh, some of the requirements are. You talked about preparation, and both of those tasks require a lot of training and a lot of preparation. Uh, Alec, a question for you, if you don't mind. Uh, so, uh, children uh, usually back in the day were always asking that they want to become uh, cosmonauts. Uh, how about the now? I mean, what would you wish uh, to the children to become? Uh, acquainted with your profession. Well, actually, right now, uh, kids uh, are dreaming of becoming cosmonauts again. Um, I think this is uh, because of uh, the media support, um, as it is more popular. Uh, you can see the results now. If 10 years ago, for example, uh, we uh, would uh, go to uh, schools and children's gardens, um, and uh, when you ask kids uh, if uh, you want to be a cosmonaut, maybe one of, out of 30 would raise his or her hand. Right now it is already more than 50 percent, and that is why I would uh, have to say that whatever we have on television and the radio is usually, is usually really helping, and the movie that is going to be um, uh, made in uh, 65, 66 um, expedition. I believe that will make this profession even more popular and everybody will be raising their hand if you ask somebody in school if they want to be a cosmonaut. Okay. Uh, do we have any more questions here? We're uh, actually almost out of time. Well, uh, well, the following the timeline specifically um, is uh, an important requirement for work on uh, on the station. And the questions uh, that we have, uh, some of them, a lot of them come from bloggers. We would like to know uh, who from the prime crew and where is going to be uh, sharing uh, his experience. So, 
Well, her experience um, as to maybe there is a, a website or something that we will be looking up to see what, well, what this interesting question. Um, well, of course, we will try to share as much as possible and tell about what we are doing. We'll be sending pictures, and uh, uh, but that will depend on uh, the free time we have, because you know that our schedule is very tight from morning to night, and uh, we will try to share all the secrets we have as much as possible. <laughs> Did you answer for everybody? Uh, for myself. Peter, uh, how about you? Maybe you will share the address or um, uh, some area where we'll be able to follow you. Uh, this is hard to say right now how much uh, time we will be able to devote to this activity. Uh, because we have an extremely busy program bringing in the new module. We'll be taking all of our time, but we will do our best. Um, just um, follow us on Instagram. Uh, but that will depend on how much time we will have for that activity. Thank you for your question. This is very simple for me to answer. When I do get the opportunity to post something, it will be at astro, A-S-T-R-O underscore S-A-B-O-T. And for everybody who wants to find out more about space and how the expedition is going, uh, will be directed to Roscosmos uh, site uh, that will feature everything. And this will complete our press conference. Thank you very much for TAS platform for the possibility of putting this together. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Roscosmos. Thank you, Star City. The organization was superb, and uh, a task platform is honored to participate in this important event. Uh, very interesting information, very interesting questions. Successful flight to you, and we are waiting for you to come back healthy to Earth. Thank you very much again. Best of luck.